imagine how that sounds to the Father when we say to him, all I want is you. We live in a nation that seems to want to turn its back on God, but there's a people who are crying out and saying, all I want. I'm not after the blessings, I'm not after the things, I'm after the presence of God. All I want. Because when you get God, you get everything else that you need. All I want is you, Lord. You can seek after things but miss God, but if you seek after God, the things will come. All I want.
Good morning, good morning. Welcome to day six of Transformation Experience, this morning session. We welcome you to our midst again, wherever you're joining us from, from Fast East Asia to East Coast or West Coast of United States of America. If you are, wherever you are in Europe, in Africa, in the Middle East, we, we, we say welcome to you this morning. This is day six of Transformation Experience, the morning session. And by the grace of God, God has brought us together again to listen to his word. And I just want to like to say a, a, a prayer, even as we start. I want us to open our mouth and declare that today is the day that Lord God has made indeed. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father Lord, we bless your name for this day. Thank you for opportunity to gather together once more. Thank you for this opportunity. Though we are gathered together virtually, but one thing we understand is there is no boundary in the realm of the spirit. We we'll give you all the glory. We exalt your name in the mighty name of Jesus. The word of God said, Blessed be the Lord who daily load us with benefit. Even God of our salvation. Even God of our salvation. Father Lord, we we'll bless your name, Lord. Thank you because you are God of our salvation. Your word said, He sent this word and heal us of our diseases. And He rescued us from the grave. Thank you because today you sent your word indeed to every one of us, wherever we are. To meet us at the point of our need. Thank you because your word will bring salvation to every soul out there. It will bring deliverance to everyone in bondage. It will bring turning points into it to every one of us, even in this period that we find ourselves in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that your will is done in today's service, Lord. In all that we we'll do from this morning session to evening session, thank you because you send your word indeed powerfully to meet us at every point of our need. We declare the service open in the name of the Father, of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you all for joining us once again. I will encourage us that you, I mean, bring it together, your family member, your kids, your, uh, your friends. Share this on your social platform, on Facebook, on, on tweet it, on Twitter. Send it out. You can join us on our YouTube channel or link to us on our Facebook platform. And I declare by the grace of God, that each and every one of us will experience the turning point of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Once more, we declare that this service is open in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And we declare that your minister that will be using to bless us today will speak with your word in the mighty name of Jesus. You speak through him expressly in the mighty name of Jesus. And every one of us will be blessed in the, by the power of the Lord. We declare that, yes, Lord, Father, your will is established in today's service in the mighty name of Jesus. Even in this morning session, as the word of God is coming forth to the leaders, to ministers, I believe God has put in us, a, every, every one of us, leadership skills. And those leadership skills will be developed through the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare liberation to every, every skills, every potential that God has deposited in every one of us. And we declare through the word of God that they are activated in the mighty name of Jesus. Activated for the, for the prosperity of the church of God. Activated for every family members in the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord Father. We will give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, I will encourage you just to settle down, relax, as we go over to praise and worship, and the uh, people will be joining us to pray. You to open the eyes of our hearts. Hey, open the eyes. Yeah, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes, Open the eyes of I my heart to see you, I want to see you I want to see you, Lord I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes, Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. 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 I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you. To see you. I am lifted up. Shining, shining in the light of your glory. Won't you 
pour out. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you, Lord. I want to see you. And say, open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you, Lord. I want to see you. To see you. To see you. I am lifted up. Shining, shining in the light of your glory. And you pour out, pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. To see you, to see you, I am lifted up. Shining, shining in the light of your glory. And you pour out, pour out your power and love as we sing. Your holy name, we give you all the praise. We want to see you, Lord. Father, we've come to declare that there is nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Excellent is your name. Your name is strength. Your name is power. A strong tower makes me sweet. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent. Is your name your name is strength your name is power a strong tower makes me say and oh, oh nobody like you Lord nobody like you Lord Everybody sing along. Oh, 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 oh. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you.
this. Thank you, Jesus. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Healer, provider, sustainer, yes, say. My God is able to heal me, Savior, 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 Savior. Oh, what a song! Mighty God, we make a. It provides all my needs. Jesus, 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 God like this. Come on, open up your mouth and say, Oh, what a serve a God like this. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a serve a God like this. We worship your name, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No one like you, Lord. No one like you, Lord. No one to be compared with you. No one to be likened with you. No one like you, Lord. You're the high and the lofty one that inhabits eternity. You're the glory and the lifter of our heads. You're the strength of our life. You are our way maker. You are our water walker. Come on, let's go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. Let's worship him. Let's magnify him. Let's glorify him. Let's thank him for another day in the land of the living. The Bible says that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. Father, we just bless your name. Father, we just adore you. Father, we just magnify you. Father, we just glorify you. Come on, go ahead and bless his name. Go ahead and bless his name. Go ahead and bless his name. Thank him because he's the God of the turning point. Thank him because he's the God of the turning point. Thank him for his grace. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his provision. Thank him for his protection. Thank him for his promotion over us in this season. Just go ahead and bless his name. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for how far you have brought us. For you have been Jehovah, our Ebenezer. For hitherto have you brought us, O oh God. You have been our guide. You have been our guard. You have been our strength. You have been our protection you have been our guidance we bless your name oh god thank you father my god for bringing us to this point for bringing us to this turning point thank you oh god for every single day of this year's transformation experience for what you did on monday for what you did on tuesday for what you did on wednesday for what you did on thursday for what you started yesterday uh, for causing us to understand uh, that our turning point comes uh, when heaven touches earth uh, when God meets man uh, when 
God impacts man when God shows up in our situation and in our circumstances thank you father for letting us know that when we come to the end of ourselves we have come to the beginning of God we have come to a new day it's a turning of a new day Lord we just bless your name we magnify you in the name of Jesus come on brethren out there I want you to go ahead and begin to bless him wherever you find yourself if you don't have words to express yourself go ahead and begin to pray in the language of the Holy Ghost Forty years Moses spent in the wilderness. Forty years Moses spent in the land of Midian. Forty years he spent taking care of his father in law's sheep. Forty years, the prime years of his life, the years of a man's youth, he spent oh, in a stagnant situation. But one day, on a certain day, he started like any other day. But on that day, he met with Jehovah. He met with the God of Abraham. He met with the God of the covenant. He met with the God of a turnaround. I want you to declare her today might seem like any other day. Today might feel like every other day. But this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice. And we shall be exceedingly glad in it. I want you to go ahead and declare it. That this is my day. This is my day. Moses, Moses. Moses, Moses. You will hear a voice behind you. Today God will single you out by name. God will call you out by name. He said Moses, Moses. I will hear Shegun, Shegun. Someone else will hear Tosin, Tosin. Someone else will hear Michael, Michael. Someone else will hear, will hear Job, Job. Today you will hear your voice behind the words of this message as our father in the Lord will bring the word this morning there will be an encounter there will be a touch there will be a tangible manifestation there will be a tangible manifestation in the name of Jesus every Every cycle of stagnancy we declare that it is broken today in the name of Jesus and like Moses said today you will go forward in the name of Jesus go ahead and declare it that I'm going forward 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 in the name of Jesus Matala Prodekazate in Bruno Cosota, Ratu Sutili Gada Gobagade, Radenke de Libra de Gada, Rusoto Yerebosha, I Prado Cosoto Yerebosha, Manta Libra de Casota, Ratica Suta Yigadaga Bagade, declare it this morning uh, that your eyes are opened, uh, your ears are opened, uh, your mouth is opened. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, we arrest every spirit uh, of destruction. Uh, every spirit uh, that makes light the things of God uh, we arrest uh, every activity of the kingdom of darkness uh, to allow you uh, to miss your word uh, we reject it in the name of Jesus uh, but we declare it uh, that everything that is done today is for our good and for our profit in the name of Jesus father we thank you for today we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, because everything is turning around for our good. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. For today, we will not go back the same way we've come. In Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, as part of our worship experience, is that we always come with an offering. David said, I will not go before the presence of the Lord 
without that which cost me something. By the grace of God, transformation experience is good ground. And I can attest to it. I want to encourage you this morning to be a part of that ground by releasing a seed. The details are on the screen. The account details are being projected right now. I'm going to bless the offering. And after that, we're going to sing the Transformation Experience Anthem. It's going to be played. Because God is turning it around for good. And this morning will be a morning of a great turnaround. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, because you minister seed to the sower. You minister bread to the eater. Thank you for the privilege to give. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to bring a sweet-smelling savour unto you. Have your way, O oh God. Glorify yourself. Glorify your name, O oh God. Let this, O oh God, offering of us speak as a memorial for the days to come and for today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to meditate on this anthem and be blessed as you listen. Connect with it prophetically. In Jesus' name. Sometimes this courage, but not the fear. Cast down, boy, nor destroy. There are times I don't understand, but I believe it's turning around for me. Of our struggles and disappointments, there are times I felt so alone. Some of my friends they let me down, but I still believe. Is turning around for me, around for me, around for me, around for me, yeah. It's turning around for me. Lift your voice and sing around for me. Around for me, around for me. Me. I can see the breaking. I can see the breaking of day. God, God is making a way. A change. a change is coming for me. If I stand strong and believe, if I stand strong and believe, there's no there's no reason to doubt. I know He's working it out. And it's turning around. It's turning around for me. This is my confession that it will always be like this. He will perfect that concerning me. Sooner or later, we're turning my favor. Sooner or later, yes, it will turn in my favor. And it's turning around, it's turning around for me. I'm excited in His presence. Hallelujah. That it would always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concerning you. And sooner or later, return in my favor. Yeah. Sooner or later. Turn it around. 
Atmosphere, and I want you to be ready to receive what God has for you in this conference. And I know, and I know, the things are turning around for you. Yeah, I want us to sing this part together. Say, around for me, 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 around for me. Yes, I know, it's turning around for me. It's turning around. I can see it. I can feel it up around for me. Around for me, yeah. It's turning around for me. It's turning around for me. Oh, I got to stop that. That is your love. That is our love. That is your love. Surely turning around for us. We want to thank God for Pastor Shanks, uh, who led us in prayer this morning. That was a powerful one. We are eternal glory to God in Jesus' name. Now I want to believe that uh, God is going to call on you and myself also this day by through His Word and through His servant as we hear His Word. Amen. But I'd like you to just uh, open to the book of Proverbs, chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, and let's read verses 1 to 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 to 4, and see what God instructs us to do um, as uh, his children, especially if we are as leaders who, or as workers in this vineyard, who needs to get God, I mean, get uh, great and great and great for her God. Amen. Uh, says hear ye children i'm reading from king james version it says hear ye children the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding for i give you good doctrine forsake you not my law for i was my father's son tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother he taught me also and said unto me let thy heart retain my word keep my commandments and live the greater legacy that a man can leave his son or daughter is, I mean, is to give instruction. Now, my biological father used to tell me or tell us as his children, he would say, three generations must not suffer the same thing. And then we add that if it happens that they suffer the same thing that one generation has not done, I mean, has failed in their responsibility. And uh, one thing that could make us to fail in our responsibilities is that the, 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 the particular generation has actually either failed to give instruction to the other generation or 
the coming generation has refused to receive instruction from the other generation the, uh, the, uh, the other generation but i want to believe that is not our our lord so our lord is that things will get better for us from generation to generation and so we have our father in the lord and the one that the lord has also used to inspire us i mean to begin transformation experience in the city of glasgow uh, uh 11 years ago and this is the 10th edition because one year was missed praise the lord and so we want to thank god because the, he has been with us right from the cradle when we started and he's still been with us and we trust god that till he goes to be with the lord he will continue to be part of the program praise the lord and uh, he has been a blessing to us and it was a blessing to us tremendously yesterday uh, as we look at there is a there is a turning point and we look at what actually leads a man to a turning point in life uh, i believe you don't forget those points now this morning is a special one for us as leaders and for workers in the vineyard and everyone that has the intention to grow and to become I mean, to walk closer with the lord hallelujah and so i also want to let us know that uh, there will be question opportunity for us to ask questions towards the end of the of the of the uh, message delivery. So please, if you have questions, please go post your questions on the Facebook, post your questions on the YouTube, and then we're going to uh, relay it to him, and then he will be able to answer as the law permits us in Jesus name. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome on to the I mean on uh, let's welcome to the seventh the sixth day morning session special morning workshop for leaders and workers in the vineyard this morning uh, as we receive the word of the Lord from our father in the Lord, the special assistant to the general overseer and then uh, the prayer coordinator for RCCG Global, uh, uh, <clears throat> Pastor Peter Olawale. God bless you, sir. All the way from Nigeria reaching us. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord for his faithfulness. I want to trust the Lord for every one of us today. Um, let the technical people check what they wrote there. What the minister ministering, okay. So that they will not uh, think that um, miracle has changed. Sanusito Alawali. God bless you. I want to thank the Lord for this hour. And I'm glad that I'm meeting with leaders in the vineyard. So we are very free right away and a conducive environment has been created to compare spiritual thing with spiritual thing, to break certain bones and by the special grace of God to speak the truth in love so that we can move on in fulfilling the mandate that our Father in heaven has committed to our hands. Please let us pray. We we'll give you all the glory. We we'll give you honor. We we'll give you all the glory. We we'll give you honor, Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you honor, Father. We give you all the glory, Holy Spirit. We give you honor. Our dear Father God, in your word, in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10, your word says, if the axe is dull, and you do not sharpen it, then you must apply for more strength. But wisdom, a profit to succeed. 
We don't want to continue to labor in vain. As your ministers, as workers in your vineyard, we need you. We need your strength. We need your grace. We need your ability. We need your favor. We need your mercy. And of course, we need your enablement. Today, Daddy, as we gather together and all that are listening to us in various missions of the world, we ask that, Lord, you will speak into our lives. Every form of struggling, whatever has been causing us to labor in vain, will be totally remote today. In message of this morning, Lord, you will use it to impart our life for the assignment you have committed to our hands and your name will be glorified. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Exodus chapter 3 verse 4. Exodus chapter 3 verse 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. I want you to take notice of the way Mosi responded here. It was far, far different from the way Saul of Tarsus responded. Saul of Tarsus asked question, Who oh, is the one speaking to me? Who are you? So the Lord had to introduce himself. The way Moses responded here is the same thing the way Abraham responded when the Almighty God visited him also. We are coming to that one later. In other words, the word or the way or the manner at which the voice sounded was very familiar to Moses. Probably he heard that word, the tune of that word or that language, 40 years before that time. He still recognized the voice. And that's why he didn't question who is that. He didn't ask who is that. He simply said, here am I. As I have been announced to you, the message this morning will be titled, Moses, Moses. Even as we continue with this transformation experience. If you are looking for a man of vision and revelation, a man whose life had a well-established journey and ministry, a man who knew the purpose for which he'd been born, a man who rejected all things so that he could fulfill the destiny, a man who rejected even being the king, the next king, because he suddenly realized, I don't belong here. The man who was personally concerning the things of God, the man on whom the mantle had already been released, so to say, he felt it, he knew it, and of course, he demonstrated that he felt it. He demonstrated it. That he felt what was right there in his life. You remember? 
how he killed the Egyptian. And you remember how he settled the quarrel between the two who happened to be the Israelites. And one of them said, you want to kill all the way you killed an Egyptian yesterday? He knew it and were ready to fight it to finish. But then an effect took place. And Moses, the man of destiny, began to dwell in what we refer to as a desert. The man on who the mantle had been released that you are the one to set the people free, now began to rot in the way in the land where there was no fulfillment whatever. The man all has seen himself and rejected all. How do you know? He's now serving the father-in-law in taking care of his sheep. How can I marry from someone and I begin to serve that family? We say, we have come from God for big bad thing. But that was Moses. And to him, I strongly believe before that day came, before that moment appeared, Moses was sick in his heart. His heart was sick. How do I know that? Oh, the long expected hope has been dashed, so to say, in his experience. And Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12 says, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12, hope divert makes the heart sick. So it was a man who was sick in heart. And may I say this, if your body is sick and your heart is okay, I'm telling you, you are okay. Because definitely, you will be healed of that sickness. But if the heart is sick, so the fellow is just existing, it's not living. That particular moment that came upon his life was a defined moment that the voice he had long time ago, at long last, the same voice has come back. And when you consider Proverbs chapter 13, verse 19, Proverbs 13, 19, you are going to discover that his heart was bitter. Not only that the heart was sick, but the heart was bitter. Why? Because she had a particular desire that had not yet been accomplished. Because the Bible says here, yeah, the desire accomplished is sweet to the heart, I mean to the soul. So when a particular desire has not yet been accomplished or has not been accomplished, the soul will be bitter. And uh, that is a very, very crucial matter in the life of somebody. I don't know whether as a minister, listen to me right now. Your heart is sick. Either as a minister, do I have a minister? Listen to me right now. Your soul is bitter. Because there is certain unaccomplished assignment in your life, and despite all these years of waiting, there's no green light yet. Moses. Moses. There's a good news for you that your waiting moment is over in the mighty name of Jesus. Your waiting moment is over. And as the Lord lives and the Spirit lives, that hope that has been deferred, that hope that has been suspended, so to say, the same God who appeared to Moses and reversed the lost hope into his life, he now had hope 
and his body, his soul that have been sick, he now been healed. And not only that, the very desire that have not yet be accomplished, that screen light now that the Lord has visited him again. As the Lord lives, and as spirit lives, Moses, Moses, it's your time to begin to experience fulfillment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen to this. When you go to Psalm 51 verse 8, Psalm 51 verse 8, there the Bible says, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones when thou art broken, may rejoice. That day, Moses had joy. That day, Moses had gladness. I believe as a minister, and I believe at work on his vineyard and whatever cap cap capacity you are serving the Lord, as the Lord leaves, and the spirit leaves, you will hear joy. You will hear God gladness. And the very bone that have been broken will begin to rejoice again. Some years ago, God brought this particular verse, Psalm 51 verse 8, into a very in a way that I understood it better. Our car was snatched at gunpoint somewhere here in Nigeria, and we began to look for it. On the third day, a brother suggested that they should carry me on their bike, that a motorcycle, so that we can be able to reach a very uh, far play within a short time. So we take off very early in the morning around 8 a.m. By 12 noon, I told the brother, let's go back to the police station to find out how far. Before I could climb the staircase to meet the officers, they would need to see me how I was sleeping because of the pains I had on my joints, as if I had dislocated bones. Suddenly we got there before the officer I stood. And I told them about the snatched car that were reported into their uh, station five um, three days ago. And they checked the file after they have asked me the plate number. And one of them said, ah, what? You have not gone to collect it? Go to the social place, your car is there. Where that pain disappeared to today, I can't say. I don't know the pain you are passing through right now as a minister. I don't know the pain you are passing through now as a man of God or as a worker in the vineyard, simply because certain hope are developed. There are certain unaccomplished desire in your heart. There are certain situations that do not portray the true image of God concerning your life, whereby others have been saying, but you serve the Lord. As the Lord lives, and as Spirit lives, you will hear joy. You will hear gladness in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, let's consider certain things and learn from Moses before we move ahead. Let's look at that Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. You are going to discover that that place, the Bible says, 
Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back side of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. Despite all the lockdown in the life of Moses, so to say, for 40 years, he did not joke with where God could be found. He went straight to the mountain of God. I want to appeal to you, my ministers, despite all the lockdown in your life, Whatever else you fear, whatever the number of years or days or months, I'm not just I'm not referring to coronavirus or COVID-19 we are talking about now. I'm talking about certain lockdown, certain unanswered prayers, certain hope that have been deferred, certain unaccomplished destiny, certain dream you had dreamed long time ago. Thank you, Father Lord. We bless your name, Lord. I'm trusting God that despite the lockdown of your life, the time for Moses has finally come in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fortunately, Moses was not the only one who experienced that particular turning point in life. Why Moses? The reversal of irreversible. How God restored him fully from what I refer to as unfulfilled dream. Abraham also had his own share. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 11, you are going to discover the same way the Almighty God addressed Moses. He addressed Abraham too. In that Genesis 22, verse 11, that is when the Almighty God appeared to Abraham from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here, yeah. you can see what I refer to concerning the way Moses responded. 
because Abraham from time to time they discussed also he knew the voice of the Almighty. So Abraham here is so far far different from that of Moses. His case. He happened to be a man who had passed through a lot in life, particularly in the area of waiting and believing. God will appear, He will promise Him, He will wait and wait and wait. God will appear again, He will promise Him, He will wait and wait and wait. He pass through certain fire in the university of waiting and patience. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 3 to 4, Malachi chapter 3, verse 3 to 4, this is how God deals with his own people. He normally sees it as a refiner and purify of silver to purify the sons of Levi and put them as gold and silver. Why? That they might offer unto the Lord an offering righteousness. He said that time it is then that the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be present unto the Lord as in the days of old, as in the former years. So the Lord has a way, has a method of producing a minister for himself or producing men and women for himself he will sit them down he will provide them as the just the way we revise if our gold and if you have been to Gosmint workshop before you discover that so a particular matter they normally pass through what you call furnace. It's not an ordinary fire. And they will apply the heat until source is ever or go is refined. It reminds me of a friend, probably I've given you had me with that illustration before. But for the benefit of those who are listening to me for the first time, this friend visited a friend of his who happened to be a ghostman in his workshop. And he witnessed when he arrived in the workshop that this friend threw gold inside the furnace. And this young man who knew nothing about refining begin to scream. You don't know the preciousness of this gold. You throw the gold into the furnace. And the ghostmate answered. It asked to. Why? He said, you wait and see. By the time it comes out, at least three things will have happened to it. He said, what are they? He said, number one, it will be purified. Number two, it will be more attractive. Number three, it will be more expensive. Um, I'm speaking to somebody here today. The fire you are passing through right now, your turning point has come to come out of that fire. And coming out of that fire, it will be more attractive because the woman has been purified. And of course, if you permit me to speak the language of commerce, you will be marketable. It is there with the pleasant before the Almighty. And I can't forget the second question that particular friend asked the ghost mate. I just discovered that you are applying the heat. But the way this heat is being applied, are you not going to burn this gold? Won't it be burnt? 
The prayer, God's maid answer, no, it cannot be bound. He said, why? How? He says, you've been here watching. A few efforts in me looking at you. Oh, what I do is that I'm looking, looking, looking at the particular goal inside the furnace. That is the reason why it cannot be born, because I am watching over it. That is a good need for all my minister today. No matter what you are passing through, somebody is up there who is by your side watching over you, making sure that no fire of this world that you are passing through will be able to consume you, not at all. The final question this young man has his friend, who happened to be a ghost was, friend, I agree with you to be purified. I agree with you it will not be born because I can see you watching over it. But when are you going to stop the heat? This particular heat you are applying, when are you going to stop it? And ghost man answered, listen to the answer, please. He said, that is why I'm watching over it. Because I will stop the heat when I see my own reflection. And brethren, in the school of painting, in the school of waiting, in the school of purification, in the school of training, God is watching, and we only stop the heat by the time he discovers his own reflection. That's the reason why, like Abraham, we have to wait patiently for him. Like Moses, we have to wait patiently for him. You know, Moses didn't go and begin to worship idol. Not at all. Where you can find him happen to be the mountain of God. I want to apply, I mean, appeal to all of you. Remain that mountain of God. Remain steadfast in prayer. Remain steadfast in anointing. Remain steadfast in praising the Lord. Remain steadfast right there in witnessing souls. Remain there in brotherly love, in holiness, in righteousness. And the time has come for the Almighty God Himself to showcase His supremacy. And listen to this. He has been schooled in the college of faith. And when God called Abraham that day, Abraham, Abraham, if you meditate on the word that followed after, I mean the words of God that followed after, and the code and encode the Lord God through those words, you can just analyze it. In the single sentence, that God could be quoted as saying, I have tried you. I have tested you. You have passed my test. The time has come for you to be rewarded. That is why God called upon Abraham that day. Don't forget, the calling that day happened immediately after Abraham obeyed God in sacrificing Isaac. If God didn't intervene on time, I see will happen. Abraham had made up his mind, whatever trial, whatever I want to tell me, I will do it. I'm trusting God by his, that by his grace you will pass the test. By his grace and by his grace only, you will not fail him. After passing the test, there is a calling waiting for you. Simply because, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, Hebrews chapter 11 says, the Bible says, God is a reward of them that diligently seek Him. He can never forget you. He will never forget you. Everything that you do in His kingdom, 
everything that that particular sister is doing, that particular brother is doing, that you are doing in his kingdom, it takes notice. And just the way called Moses, Moses, to restore his hope, to restore his call, he called Abraham also to reward him. You are crossing over from whatever you are doing now, wherever you are now gloriously, a turning point is coming your way. For how you have been asking God, I'm the one you use to build this. I am the one you use to build this. I'm involved in this, and you know, Lord, the payment of my tithes, payment of my offering, I do not owe. I do whatever you have commanded me. I walk in your vineyard. I encourage the discouraged. I leave those that are down up. I went so to your kingdom. When will you remember me? The answer is this. Your time for the world is now. He will reward you. I have not called the children of Jacob to walk with me in vain. Not at all. You can never walk in vain in his vineyard. In Genesis chapter 15 verse 1, Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, the Almighty God told Abraham, I am your seed and your exceeding great reward. I believe that what the God told, telling somebody here today, I am your seed, your exceeding great reward. So he called Abraham, to say you have been faithful you have been loyal to me. You've been obeying me. Therefore, right now, have your reward. And what to happen to be that reward? The Lord God spoke to him and said, In blessing, I will bless you. In multiplication, I will bless you. I mean, multiply you. If anybody can count the stars of heaven or the seeds of that when they be able to count the number of your children. And the Lord see the covenant of that day. That, that day was the day Abraham received the covenant can, cannot be reversed. We are still talking of Abraham yesterday as if he was right there last year when God spoke. Thousands of years ago is what we are talking about now. It is your turn to be rewarded. What am I saying? Your labor in the Lord is not in vain. He will begin to reward you henceforth. Not only that, God also called several other people that the same way. Moses, Moses, Abraham, Abraham, and go straight to 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10. You will see the turn of Samuel. I'm pointing to all these so that you will not just think it is a coincidence when God called Moses. No. He called Moses to restore the glory. He called Abraham to reward his work. Now Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 10. 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 10. And the Lord came and stood and called us other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Your servant is listening, your servant hear it. This young prophet, young my boy, he was just a young lad. He was just a young, I mean, he never, never, never heard before about this particular call of God. You remember I ran to Eli, you are calling me, sir. Eli said, no. Third time, Eli said, ah, I think God will be responsible in this. When he calls you again, your response, your server hear it. That is when God began to speak. And somebody is here today, 
Everything concerning your life is tiny and very small. That thing God has committed to your hand is small. You yourself look at your destiny and your life, you are small. I'm not talking about physical appearance now. I'm talking about that thing that you can point to. Here, the young prophet was said, how old was he? And how old was he? He has not even started the prophetic or something right here. And somewhere, <laughs> somewhere, the entire nation of Israel cannot forget somewhere. Till today, somewhere rings in their years as a great prophet. So, here today, perhaps everything concerning your life is nothing to write home about. But God is saying, I am a promoter. I can promote you. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 13. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 13. He said, Behold, my servants have been dead prudently. He shall be exalted and next old and be very high. I was discussing with a very senior pastor, my colleague in the mission, recently. I will remember those days, 30, 35 years ago, thereabouts. And we laughed. You mean we, that time, we can be recognized like this today? We can occupy the office we are occupying today in the redeemed Christian Church of God? Suddenly we discover that his servant can never, never be abandoned. He monitors the life of his servant. I'm talking to Almighty God. The Almighty God, who is in charge of life or somewhere, right from small somewhere, became a great prophet in Israel. The same God is speaking to somebody here today that your today might be small, your later hand will be greatly involved. But take notice of somewhere that man lived a very good life. Remember when he was rounding up, he had the people come to me now and tell me straight ahead who's good animal. Have I stolen? Who is that fellow that have I offended? Whose wife or somebody have I snapped? From here to his toe, he had no repentance to me. That was somewhere. So therefore, if we really want the Almighty God to build us in his kingdom, systemically and consistently to move us on, learn from somewhere. Let me move on. Not only that they call Moses, restored hope, banished all the years of stagnation in his life. Not only that they called Abraham, and right there in the life of Abraham, he rewarded him. And not only that they called Samuel, and he brought him up. Also in Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Luke 22, 31. The Almighty God also called Peter twice. The Lord says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desire to have you, that he may sift you as a wheat. But don't bother about that. I have been praying for you. I have prayed for you. To Simon Peter, God is giving him the word of assurance 
that I will be with you. I have been with you. I am with you. And I will continue to be with you. Do you know that the reason why one day after they crucified Jesus and they arrested Peter and they kept Peter in inner prison, you remember what Peter was doing? He was just sleeping, enjoying himself. We don't sleep in the time of crisis, but Peter believed the Lord. I will be with you. In Isaiah 54, verse 17, Isaiah 54, 17, there the Almighty God said, No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that arise against you in judgment, the Almighty God will condemn. That is the assurance God had for Peter and for you today. So he's speaking to somebody here today. Your name is Simon, so to say. Simon, Simon, don't worry. I will be with you. No weapon fastened against you will prosper. Whatever I try to truncate your destiny, they will meet my wrath. Battles for you. He had that assurance for Peter. And that's the reason why. Despite all, Peter kept on moving. And he ended well. I'm trusting God for somebody here today with Simon, so to say, you are afraid of tomorrow. You are battling for your future. Because of certain situation you have observed from where you come from. And God is speaking to you today. I will be with you. I will guide you. I will protect you. Probably you have heard a story from me before when I was there with you in Glasgow. I, I don't know whether I've told you this story. A pastor, a man of God was traveling one of the highways here in Nigeria. And we got to a particular point towards evening around 9, 10 p.m. The car stopped working. It stopped working. He parked the car and nobody will wait for you at that time. So he pretended as if the car at the fellow had a mechanical fault or electrical fault. We know how to do it in Africa here. Yeah, you open the bonnet. That's what he did and he slept. Around 12 midnight, a man came out naked from nowhere with a cock in his hand. A cock in that particular chicken, live chicken with red uh, something on it. And he entered into the bull and the man was watching, tied the rope around the leg of that end, tied the rope around the hands and called the name of that fellow. So and so, he called the name. As I'm tying the leg of this end, as I'm tying the hands of this end, that is how your destiny will be tied down. And then release the hand inside the books. And the hand began to wobble as it were. And he said, and he said, at this end it's wobbling. That is how the death he called, he just began to call the fellow. That the destiny of that fellow will be wobbling and so on and so forth. The man of God thought he was watching an old video or a particular action film. And God spoke to the man of God, What are you waiting for? Go and look for the cock and untie the rope. The man had left, then the man of God left the car and look for the cock, and because the cock will not go far. He untied the rope and he was saying, So and so, I don't know you. As I'm untying the particular end, the dead end that I've been tied down is now loose. Your hands, the untied down, have been loosed. Do you know there are certain people whose hands and legs are tied by the enemy? I believe that particular man, they said his name, 
happened to be John because John is what that man was calling. Must have belonged to the Almighty God, like Peter. And God said, No weapon, fasten against you, it prosper. And I believe after the leg and the hands of that father have been untied, the rope will go back to sender and tie the man down. The man can only escape if he eventually uh, gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. So I don't know whether we have Simon Peter here. You have the fear of tomorrow. You are panicking. You are worried. May I tell you a secret? God is speaking to you right now. I will be with you. Satan has desired to have you, to sit you at your feet, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you have been comforted, sweating thy brethren. One day, just shortly after I've been appointed to lead prayers, and I saw the horror in the spirit realm, and I discovered that all the all the assignment I, I have to do now happen to be battles and warfare. And I will not deceive you, brethren. Fear gripped me. I remember the night, shortly after that, I sat beside my wife right there in the bed in the night. And I was looking at the innocent woman. I remember when I began to weep. I was not sick. Nobody was. But I just began to have the fear if I die now. Thank God for God who didn't give me a knock on my head. And the Lord spoke to me and said, Why are you worried about tomorrow? Why are you worried about tomorrow? And the Lord made the statement that I can never forget. He said, I'm going to give you an assignment. If you can carry it out, then continue to worry. But if you cannot, the worry net therefore is a foolish idea. He said, when you want to sleep in the night, tell your wife, my wife, I am about to sleep, I am about to sleep, I have slept. So if you can do that, then continue to exercise your worry in anxiety. He said, number two, when to wake up in the, on the following day, tell your wife also, I am about to wake up, I'm about to wake up, I'm woken up. So if you can do that, you can continue to be worried. And I just discovered that it is practically impossible for me to do. That is how worrying disappeared. Maybe because my name is, is Peter. That's why I began to worry and began to behave like Peter. But immediately the Lord spoke to me. Fear disappeared. Anxiety disappeared. Peter, listen to me. Simon, Simon, listen to me. Your tomorrow is bright. Your tomorrow is great. Your tomorrow is all right. But learn from Peter also. One day, Jesus told the disciple, will you go away also according to John chapter 6? They told him, you have the word of life. Peter was the one who spoke. Where do we go? We have accepted you as my Lord, as our Messiah. We are going to know where. I'm trusting God for you. As you have decided, as you have made up your mind. The Lord God himself will see you through. Let me round up by looking at another man. Don't forget, he called Moses. To have his life restored. He called Abraham to reward him concerning all the sacrifices he has made. Somewhere, somewhere, the Almighty God said, In order to encourage the young man that I will groom you, I will promote you, I will carry you up. I will sustain you. I will make you great. And he called Peter to terminate every iota of fear out of his life. And now in Acts chapter 9, verse 
Acts chapter 9, verse 14. There the Almighty God called a man called Saul of Tarsus. He was going to arrest to arrest the apostles, disciples of Jesus, the follower of Jesus. Christianity to Saul of Tarsus was a taboo. Why should such a particular religion be allowed? Paul said. But on his way to Damascus, the Lord appeared to him and he had the turning point. He fell to the heart in Acts 9 4, Acts chapter 9, verse 4. And the voice had a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? Why are you persecuting me? Ha! Ah. Are there anyone today in our midst who happen to be Saul of Tarsus, thinking that he's serving God but is not, but rather persecuting the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, leaders? Now listen, please. Paul had never met Jesus physically before. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke from heaven. Paul was here on earth. And I believe if this Paul happened to meet Jesus when he was here on earth, he would have believed perhaps. So there was no physical contact. But Saul so, or Paul were persecuting the followers of Jesus Christ. Leaders. Any child of God we persecute. We are persecuting Jesus directly. Any of the children of God that we made to cry because we are leaders over them. Indirectly, we are persecuting Jesus. When you build your joy on the sorrow of others, we are persecuting Jesus. When, like King Saul, we will not like to see the face of David, our David. That moment we are persecuting Jesus. When the gift the Lord has given to someone is now standing right there as an obstacle to our development, so to say, that is carnality. At that moment we are persecuting Jesus. Let's take notes. When a particular star is appear to shine more than yours, and you are persecuting that star, indirectly we are persecuting Jesus. Any child of God that passes through our hands like Jesus passing through, and we are going to make a can. So, so, why have you persecuted me? Listen to me. Here, Saul was not committing adultery. He was not committing robbery. He was not committing But he persecuting the children of God. And God had to knock him down. The greatest knockdown ever is God to knock somebody down. Because such a fellow can lose his sight immediately. That is what happened to Saul. But the God of mercy, like we had yesterday, broke his silence, spoke to Saul, and Saul yielded immediately. And by the special grace of God today, perhaps he labored more than all that labor is day. 
So therefore, we may need certain aspect of step to be taken today, and that is repentance. Repentance. If there's any way where we are not pleasing to God, repent. If there's any situation in our life whereby we've been persecuting Jesus, repent. If there's any form where we've been thinking we are serving God, but we are serving self, repent. If we cannot speak to one another as members of the church of God, we should repent. If we are not working together as one in the city of Glasgow, or in the entire nation of Scotland, or the United Kingdom, all what we need is repentance. Because once we are not in one accord, we are persecuting Jesus. Why are you persecuting me? I'm trusting the Almighty God that starting from this moment, messages we listen to today, we Give for what is called a turning point. Moses, a turning point is on your way right away. The vision, the dream you had dreamed years ago would begin to experience fulfillment in the name of Jesus. Abraham, God knows how you've been laboring, how you've been putting all your best in this kingdom. How you've been obeying him. Your time for the world has come. Somewhere you are little now, you are small. But there's somebody who will groom you, who will lift you up, and is calling on you today. He said, You'll be very hard. Simon, the good news is this. Despite all what the enemy has been trying against your life, they will free in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, so, listen to the voice of God. This is not ideological statement. This is not philosophical statement. This is the word of God. God is asking, why are you persecuting me? Or perhaps because we are right there in our homes, you've not given your life to Jesus. Jesus is asking you, why are you persecuting me? What offense have I committed that will not allow you to accept me as your Lord and personal Savior? I died for you. I suffered for you. All that happened to me happened to me because of you. Why? Why are you persecuting me? Why have you not given your life to me? It's a great question. And I'm trusting the Almighty God today. That question will be answered correctly. You will stop persecuting Jesus. And by the special grace of God, as many are in vineyard, and all of you listen to us, and they particular that YouTube or Twitter, or whatever uh, platform, the Lord God himself will visit you the way he visited Moses, will visit you the way he visited Abraham, will visit you the way he visited all that we have narrated in this particular message of today. I'm very sorry we hear your testimonies. I will round up with this particular statement. I heard this particular statement from a man of God that a wise man was in a city and the wise man was tagged or named or nicknamed Solomon in that particular city because of the wealth of wisdom. Ask him any questions was ready to answer. Suddenly two little kids, two little boys, they just decided 
We will prove this man wrong that not every question will be able to answer. How do you do that? The other boy asked. He said, immediately we hear that the man is in town to go and look for a butterfly. And we put the butterfly in between our fingers, alive. We will hurt the man, man of God. There is something in between our fingers. Is it alive or dead? He wanted just direct answer. He said, if the man say he's dead, he will just release the butterfly, thereby prove the man wrong. He said, if the man said he's alive, we just quit their uh, fingers and kill the butterfly, thereby prove the man wrong. They got where the man was and said, man of God, there's something in our hands. Is it alive or dead? And the man of God in his widow looked at them, eyeball to eyeball, said, gentlemen, that thing in your hand, if it is alive or is dead, it is in your hand. I conclude with that analogy, please. Ministers of God, are you Moses? And God is saying, it is in your hand. I was saying, God is ready. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they are all ready. And God is saying now, it is in your hand. I'm trusting God for you, who made the right decision. And by the time I see you again, to be testimony galore. God bless you. Daddy, thank you for, for your faithfulness and for your grace. Thank you, Lord. You have spoken your word. Please establish in our life. Like Moses, establish all our business. Like Abraham, we have been waiting, we have been trusting you. The time for our reward has come. Daddy, like Samuel, lead us up, O God. And of course, Daddy, like Samuel Peter, encourage us, guide us, protect us. And like Saul of Tarsus, we will never persecute you again. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Ready for your question with us, Penny? Please let's reduce the bottom there. I can hear the echo here. Except you want me to hear what you are saying. Yes, Hallelujah. We thank God, Daddy, for the words of wisdom that we have received from you. The concluding wisdom this morning is we are 
the determinant of the life and the death of everything that God has committed to our hands. And that's a great wisdom. Uh, do we have anyone with questions? So far, no question has been posted on the Facebook or the YouTube platform. Um, so if there is no question we want to say, is there any question coming in? None, okay? Uh, that means we, we have been challenged to go back home to go and re, I mean, re study and refresh ourselves and respond to God, waiting God on God to call on us as he did for Moses, for Peter, for Abraham, as well as for Samuel and Saul, who became Paul, in Jesus' name. Daddy, one more time, we want to say a big thank you for, you, uh, for your life. You've been a great inspiration to us, a great, a great uh, motivation for us, an encouragement you have always been to us, and especially to my own life and my family. We return, to, return our glory to you. I mean, to the Lord. We return our glory to the Lord on your behalf, sir. Uh, we look forward to receive further instruction from you. Uh, from the Lord this evening uh, in the name of Jesus. We appreciate all the labor of love that you are going through and you are putting forth uh, to, to, to ensure that we come to great uh, experience. Praise the Lord. I just, I've just been told now that there is one question. <laughs> <I think. laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, could we have the question posted on the screen? for daddy to see over there in in nigeria praise god daddy Olawalia is reaching to us or has been reaching to us all the way from nigeria uh is his uh, home and his new broadcasting studio <laughs> uh, all the way from redemption city nigeria praise god and it, what's the question Okay, the question is on the screen, sir. And it says, uh, what would you say is Moses' greatest asset, sir? It's how the Lord has been able to use him to take the people of Israel from the land of Egypt. That happened to be the greatest asset. The Almighty God used him to bring the people of God who had been there for about 400 years and he led them out of the land of slavery. That is the greatest asset. And that asset happened to be a deposit in him that he had been created to lead his people out that had been in him all the way immediately he realized that the people that have been punished and taught him they are his people they are his blood and god planted that one so that's the greatest asset the z to deliver and god makes use of that one and use him to take the people out of the land of Egypt. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, sir. I'm sure that's uh, that that's a deep one for several of us. That's uh, telling us about the passion that has been in the life of Moses right from beginning. I believe that passion also was planted into him by his mom. Praise God. Thank you one more time, sir. We trust that the Lord will refresh you. <laughs> Friends, because I know uh, I'm intimate, I'm, 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 I'm informed on what 
that he has gone through this morning. This is his third session of ministration today. So I want you to continue to pray for, along with him. Uh, and of course, he's going to come back in the evening to be, to be a blessing to us. So you, please keep on praying for him and keep on praying along with him. Praise the Lord. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure we have been blessed this morning. And I trust that uh, you're going to go back home to work or you're going to go forth again and begin to refresh yourself on what you have been hearing from Monday. Or, or sorry, from, yeah, from Monday till now and especially this morning. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word of God. I am very confident in the Lord that you can never be the same. I will not be the same again. You will not be the same again. We will not be the same again. Our homes, our ministry will not be the same again. The churches of God, our local assembly where we are, I mean that we represented, will never be the same again. Our communities, our nations will never be the same again. And so God bless you as we gather back by 6.30 this evening uh, across the globe, or across the various locations we have, even to come to learn of the Lord more. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now don't forget that if you want the complete set of the messages of the Transformation Experience 2020, please pass your request onto uh, the um, technical team or the media team of uh, Redeemed Christian Church of God, Beautiful Gate, Glasgow. And you can do that by using their email. If you go to their website, beautifulgateglasgow.org, you'll, you'll find their email there, and then you'll be able to communicate to them uh, by email, and then they'll be able to get connected with you and get you in, instructed on how you can get it from them. Hallelujah. The Lord has been so good. Amen. I want you to just lift up your voice and give thanks unto the Lord there, yeah, wherever you are. Just appreciate God for his faithfulness. Appreciate God for his kindness. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Amen. Our appreciation goes to the media team who has been working tirelessly to ensure that our broker continue live all the time. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. And declare the fellow, I mean the blessing upon your life. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen may the lord bless you may the lord keeps you may the lord guides you and may the lord shield you cause his countenance to be lifted upon you and his face to shine upon you in jesus name amen see you in the evening god bless you The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace.
to you, Lord, time is fixed for you and in peace. children and the children may his favor be upon you and the thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children
Children and the children, may His presence go before.